When I was a younger man, I uh, bought my first property in the country. It had a little land and some timber. Uh, it was a ranch, about 20 years old, with a walkout basement. Um, and uh, it had a forced air propane gas furnace. And I'd never used propane up until that point. Well, I took possession of the property in October, and uh, it was a cold October that fall. November was colder, and by the time December rolled around, it was freezing bitter cold. I discovered on New Year's Eve that year that my propane tank was about empty. I had gone through 500 gallons of gas in 90 days. Shortly after that, I installed a wood-burning stove and I started harvesting the uh, timber that was on that land. And I never turned that furnace on again for seven more years. This is the first of several videos that I'm going to do exploring the different methods of heating a home uh, using wood versus the traditional methods of electric, uh, propane gas, and heating oil. And I'm going, I'm going to furnish you with some basic information and I'm going to do some comparables and some side-by-side -side cost analysis to let you know what the breakdown is. How much does it really cost to heat your home the way you're doing it now versus using wood? So stay tuned. Another advantage to a wood-burning stove is the quality of heat that it produces over a forced air furnace system. A wood-burning stove will efficiently and effectively warm a room using radiant heat. That means that the heat from your stove is rising, it's coming out, and it's going to the sides. It's going to thoroughly spread out and effectively warm that living area versus a ducted furnace which is pushing air through those pipes and it's going to a specific area in each room and it's going to heat that primarily first. You can install a wood burning stove in just about any room in your house as long as you have access to create an outside vent. And what that means is that you could effectively zone heat your house using wood heat. Now you can't cook on your furnace and I don't think you can cook on your propane tank. But I'll bet, if you had to, you can cook on your cast iron stove. So in my neck of the woods, and in my lifetime, propane has run anywhere from a low of 50 cents per pound all the way up to about 90 cents per pound. To, to install a propane, say a 500 gallon propane tank, and get it set up, is going to be at least $1,500. If you want to install a propane forced air furnace, you're looking at least $3,000, and that's if you know somebody. Uh, what you can do when you want to evaluate the cost on your appliances, look at your last uh, heating season. Now, for some of us, it, winter may be three months. Uh, for others, it could be five months. Let's take five months. Let's say your bill last year was $1,750. Bucks you can take that five months, take five, divide it into 1750, and that's gonna give you an average monthly cost of about $350. So you're spending an average of $350 every month for propane for five months. So you're at $1,750. Now, let's presume that you're using wood as your heat source. And let's say that a cord of wood in your area runs about $250 a cord and you're going to burn through a cord a month. Now here, I all go through about two and a half cords a winter. Five is going to be quite a bit, but just for the sake of discussion, let's play this out. So at the end of five months, you have got an investment of $1,250 in wood that you burnt to heat your home versus what you would have spent in propane of $1,750. So there's a $500 difference right off the top. Unlike the furnace and the propane, you paid for the gas, you've paid for the furnace, and there it is. With a wood stove, the money that you've saved off of your utilities is coming right back to you, which you can put in your pocket or you can apply to your original investment. That's the savings of one year. When you uh, 
go forward exponentially, you're looking at paying off your uh, heating equipment in your home very rapidly. And another side note of that is, that's if you're paying for a cord of wood. If you have firewood that you can cut on your property or that you can, you can uh, manage to bring home doing it yourself, then the savings are substantially larger. Now, what some people will do is they'll use their furnace as a backup where they may set their thermostat at 60 degrees so that if they're gone to their job or they're gone away from the home for an extended period and the temperature drops below, say, 60, the furnace will kick on and that can prevent freeze damage. Wood burns hotter than propane. Wood burns hotter than propane. Side by side, an equal measure of wood will create more BTUs than propane. What that means is that you're going to create more heat in your house using less fuel. Now, the cost to install uh, a cast iron stove system can range as little as just replacing your stove. The everyday models these days are an EPA uh, rated stove, maybe four or five, six hundred dollars, to a complete system, which could be three thousand dollars or more. And in that case, you're talking about hardware, chimneys, carpentry work to install an exterior chase or cut through the ceilings and the roof. What I'm trying to show you here, though, is the savings that you will realize using wood heat can be applied back to your original investment and it can pay for itself in a very, very short time. Now, as I said earlier, I went through 500 gallons of propane in 90 days. Right after that, I installed a wood-burning stove, and I filled that tank back up. That tank of propane lasted me 13 months. A loose, round, about average number is that it takes about 20 BTU to heat one square foot of space. Now, if you're in that old farmhouse in Minnesota, well, it may take 30 or 40 or 50 BTUs. Uh, if you've got one of those leaky houses where your newspaper is rattling next to the window while you're trying to read it, then that's a sign. The cost per BTU for wood is cheaper than heating oil, than electricity, and propane. That savings, again, goes right back in your pocket. One other positive about a, fur, uh, about a cast iron stove is it doesn't require electricity. If the grid goes down, you don't need a solar panel or a, a solar system for backup. You don't need a generator for backup. It just runs. So what are some of the negatives of burning wood inside your home? Well, number one is the physical work. All right, you're gonna have to cut wood. If you don't and you have it delivered, you're still gonna have to load it, haul it into the house. Two would be cleanup. It's messy. If you're bringing wood into your house, you're going to have bark or splinters or bugs or dirt or something that you're inevitably going to track in. So there's that. Three would be supervision. Um, you know, unless you're home all the time, you're a homesteader, you're an off-gridder, I mean, you're working from home, you're going to have to tend to the fire occasionally. Um, number four is insurance. You may have to jockey around to try and find an, an insurance carrier that will cover you knowing that you're going to be burning wood as a primary source of heat. Now, of course, the numbers and the examples that I'm giving you are generalizations because they're based on where I live. Um, your savings using wood heat, your effectiveness of a wood heating system is going to vary greatly depending on where you live. You may find a huge savings in your utility bills you may find minimal. Um, what I'm trying to give you now is just some numbers and a little information to help you become more informed so that you can make a decision in the future based on what serves you best. All right, so I hope this segment helped you understand a little more clearly some of the differences, the effectiveness and the cost of burning wood to heat your home versus using propane. If you click on the subscribe button right here in the corner, you'll be alerted every, uh, for every new video that we have coming out. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.